Well, welcome to No Limits. Thanks so much for being here with us today. You could have chose to be anywhere, and you chose to be here. And I'm really honored that you're here. And I almost wasn't here because I was, I was going to stay home. The rest of my family's at home. They're all snotting and sneezing and, and coughing. But, but it's no, they don't act sick. Like, they're still eating and playing and, like, all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't think that, you know, who's sitting close to us in these chair Kids don't know how to keep their snot to themselves. So... <laughs> And they're, they're at home. And I was going to stay home with them, and the Lord was prodding me because he's got a message for me to give today, but I'm going to save that for the end because my dad's got the word today. Uh, for those of you who weren't around last summer, we do this every summer. It's called Summer at No Limits, and you're going to hear from a different speaker every week during June and July. It's a nice break for me. It allows me to prepare for what's coming in August, and it's also a great time for us to hear from other other people who have the Word of God in their hearts, including my dad. He's up today, and he'll be up next week as well. He's kind of long-winded, so I was like, Dad, you probably need two Sundays, don't you? And he's like, yep, sure do. So uh, <clears throat> come on up, Dad. This is our founding pastor, my dad, and we wouldn't be here without him. So, yep. Now, if you've got something to say... It's for the end. Okay. Okay. All right, I need that stand, so take that okay. mic off there. Put, it, put that stand up there. See, I'm still the boss, amen. <laughs> All right, stand up with me one more time. Come on, now, we got to do this. Hey, everybody, put your hands up in the air. Show me them spirit fingers. <laughs> Woo, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a brand new creation in Him. I have now approached the presence of God with no condemnation of sin. Now point to your big old noggin here. I have the mind of Christ. Therefore, what belongs to him belongs to me. Now give him a shout. Come on. Woo, what better place to be than right here, amen? Woo, man. I was thinking about what Dylan said a while ago. Thank the Lord for the air conditioning. <laughs> right? One time I was in overseas and we got into a church that was rained out. I mean, it was really rained out. But they still took us anyway. We got in the back of a big truck and had to go across some flooded waters. And when we got there, there was water running through the church. There was about three inches of water in the floor of the church. Now, right then, most Americans would have said, I think I'm going home. I'm going home, I might get electrocuted, or something like that. We held church in that, and it lasted two or three hours. And the water still ran across the church floor. Thank the Lord for air conditioning, amen? One time I preached on a mountain. There was a World War II plane on the side of that mountain that had wrecked in World War II, not to see it. I preached in a barn with no floors but hay on it. I saw a man delivered from a demon in that barn. It doesn't matter where you are. It's who you got with you and who you take with you everywhere you go. Amen? You see, it doesn't really matter where you are because when you know who you are, it doesn't matter who's around you either. There's lots of things to try to, to, try to quench the Spirit of God, but the Spirit of God is more powerful than anything that could ever be in a room or anywhere around you. Those of you who are struggling today because, and I know there are some here that you are struggling today because something happened in your life in the past... Oh, day, maybe two or three weeks, and you don't feel very spiritual, you need to tell your flesh to shut up. I know there are kids in here, but it's Pastor Mark. <laughs> tell your flesh to be quiet. Some of you need to do that right now. As a matter of fact, some of us need to just tell the devil to stay under our feet. Come on, come on, just do this right here. Say, stay under there, because that's as far as you're going. Now, I'm going to do something different today than what I usually do. We're going to go in the Old Testament, amen? And I don't do that very often, but we're actually going to go in the Old Testament because I, I, and we're going to go to one of the books that most people know, they think they know everything about, and it's the book of Jonah. 
And so what you're telling me, Brian, right now is we can't put anything up on screen, right? You should be so glad that I brought something with me today, right? <laughs> So you're going to put out, you're going to, if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open to the book of Jonah. If you're going to bring it on your phone, I'll allow you to do that. But if you're texting on your phone, the Lord's going to know. And He's going to tell me. So bring, bring Jonah up however you can. Uh, I'll be speaking from the New King James Version because it's just easier for me. Now, the name of this sermon is called, It's Not About the Fish. It's not about the fish. Can you believe that? We've been taught all along that this is a, that this is a good kid's book, that we can read through it, and that it's all about Jonah getting swallowed by the big fish. It's really not about the fish, folks. There's a lot more story in Jonah, and it's all about adulting. It is. It really is. Now, we'll be talk, you know, we'll talk about him being in the in the belly of the fish, the great fish, and this and that, but that's not what this is about. Are you ready? Now, since this is so short and it doesn't take me very long, and Cade's got something at the end, I'm not gonna take very long, but we're gonna learn something this morning. Everybody tell me right now, I'm gonna learn something this morning. The Lord is speaking to me right now. The Holy Spirit is in this room. And it sounds like there's an airplane in here too. That's what that is. <laughs> now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. Now why would the Lord tell somebody to go to a great city and cry out against it? Their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish because the pre from the presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of God. Now, get this story here. The Lord tells this guy that he wants to go to this great city of Nineveh to save this entire city. And what does he do? He runs. Could you imagine somebody being called by God to do something and they run the other way? No, that wouldn't. No. No, that never happens, right? Yeah, let's just go on. But the Lord sent out, or, so he's on this boat, right? But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea. So that the ship was about to be broken up. So can you just imagine this? Those of you who don't like the sea. Has anybody been out on sea and the ship about to break up? Huh? I've been out on a few and, it's, and it wasn't very fun. And I'm just sitting here thinking, well, then the mariners were afraid. So you know it's got to be pretty bad. The mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his God. Notice it's a small G. You see that? And threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lower parts of the ship. He had laid down and he was fast asleep. Who does that remind you of? Yeah. Brandon. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean to sleep? Arise, call on your capital G, God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. This, this has got to be pretty bad at this point, right? And they said to one another, come let us cast lots. What is a cast, what's casting lots? Like drawing straws? Okay, kind of like betting. They're going to cast lots that we may know whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, please tell us, watch this now, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? And what is your country? And what people are you? He said to them, I am a Hebrew. 
And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. So here it goes. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing even worse. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Mm. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow even worse. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord. Guys, how could this be? They didn't even believe in God before this happened. They were crying out to their own gods. Now they're crying out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done this, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea. Mm. And the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now... We're going to skip the whole next chapter. Is that not, is that not Jonah's prayer? Yeah. Because I think if it was Jonah 2021, here's how it would be. <laughs> oh God, please save me from this woman. Oh God, please save me from this man. Oh God, how come I don't make as much money as Carrie? I know I'm smarter than he is. Oh God, please help this church. This pastor doesn't know what he's doing. Please help Kate. He's crazy. Lord, don't send us any more Brandons. We can only take one. God, please help me. Help me to make more money. Help me to be send me a nicer car. That's Jonah 2021. 20, because we like to whine. We like to cry. And he's crying in the belly of this whale or the belly of this fish. And as he cries and as he whines and as he prays, he turns around and the, and the fish vomits him back up on land, right? Just throws him back up on land. Huh? After all that just throws him back up on land, what does Jonah do? Shall we just go on reading? It's pretty good, huh? Pretty good little story. Well, we're going to skip that whole chapter. If I can do this, this is, this is pretty tech savvy for me. I want you guys to know this. There we go. <laughs> So now he's been thrown up out of the fish, right? So here he goes. Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach this message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city. Seems like we're repeating the story, aren't we? It was a three-day journey in extent. and Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk, then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh will be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God. Do you notice it didn't take much for the, to turn this big city around? What is it, 120,000? They were ready. Hmm. They put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then the word came to the king of Nineveh. He arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. I mean, they were really turning around here, folks. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying, Let neither man or beast, herd nor flock, taste anything do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. 
and cry mightily to God. Yes, let every one turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may, we may not perish? Then God saw their works. They turned from their evil way. God relented. What does relented mean? He relented from their disaster that He said He would bring, them up, bring upon them and He did not do it. Well, it looks like the end of the story, doesn't it? That's got to be it, right? What happens? Does anybody know this story? Jonah got mad. Why did he get mad? He got mad at God. You see, Jonah hated the people of Nineveh. He wanted them destroyed. He did not want to save those people. So God saved them and Jonah got mad at God for doing this. Okay, let's go to the backstory here. Jonah was called to save these people. He ran from God because he didn't want to save them. He went through a dark time in his life. A pretty dark time. He prayed, he relented, he come out of the way out of the ocean, he went and preached to Nineveh, saved the entire 120,000 people and got mad at God because God saved them. I don't understand this. How could anybody who was called by God get mad at God because God did? what God said. How could this happen? How could anybody be so angry with God because God did what God said He would do? I looked at this and I went, you know, I'm sure glad that God called me and I did everything that I said, that God said that I should do. <laughs> well, I shared a little bit of that this morning with my class. A lot of people didn't know the history of this church, how it started. How many of you know the history of this church and how it started? You do now, right? Gene and I started this church several years ago, and some of you are still here that were here from the very beginning. We came from another church. I asked the pastor who was my father-in-law if I could go start a church, and he said no. He said no. I did it anyway. And I went through a lot of things in the next few years because I wasn't very... What? Submissive to authority. That's a good one right there. I went through a lot of things and then I thought, you know... Some of the things I went through, I really didn't have to go through. Don't you think? Actually, some of the things that this church went through, it didn't have to go through either, which it came through it. Now, Cade wasn't the first pick for pastor of this church. It was somebody else, which it didn't work out. Let me back that up. Cade wasn't the first pick that I had as pastor of this church. And it didn't work. And I told this church that I would give it two years. I would pastor it for two years and it ended up being ten. Now I see this church growing the way it should. Amen? And it's all because I really didn't do what God had told me to do because it was really my father-in-law who said it just wasn't time. He said, I, it did, not that he said I couldn't start a church. He said, it, you're just not ready. And he was right. I wasn't ready. Some of you remember some of the things we went through. Carrie's up here smiling at me because he knows exactly and some of the rest of you know. But my goodness, did we ever come through it. 
want to ask you, if God asks you or gives you a calling, what are you going to do with it? What? Answer it. I got one listening to me this morning. <laughs> if God gives you something to do, what are you going to do? That's an awful easy answer. Huh? Say yes. What if it's hard, it's difficult, and it's to people that you don't want to talk to? What if we have to invite people in the church that we don't want? What if we have to have more Brandons? What if we have to have more Nates? What if we have to have more Pastor Paul Pauls? One's enough, amen? Yeah. What will you do with the calling that God has on your life? Because I can think of several times, several people are called by God and they get into a very dark place. Because the calling that they have on them is a lot harder than just living the life that they have, that they've got right now. What? It's change. Change is hard. What if it's, what if it's quitting your job and, not making, and making a whole lot less money than what you are right now? You know, God doesn't care how much money you make. I told my class this morning, He really doesn't. He really doesn't care if you're making a million dollars or if you're making $10,000. It's what you do with what you have. Because when you really get to understand that, you're going to have more and more and more because of what you do with what you have. Well, what if God's called you to a particular church? How many of you were called to this church? How many of you know? I remember the first Sunday Tim and Darla came to church. The very first Sunday. I don't know why I remember that. It must have been because Tim's so good looking. I remember the day you walked through the door. And I knew they were here to stay. What if you're called to a particular church? What does God call you to that church for? No, it's probably to change the pastor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably to come in here and change what Cade's saying. Cade's not right. Cade, Cade doesn't, I don't agree with what Cade's saying, so I'm going to change him. That's not what God calls anybody to church for. Over the years, I've had so many people try to change me. Can you believe that? I had somebody come through the door one time, and she said, this is the first time I've been here, but I can see the problems that you have. And if you will let me come in here and take over your leadership, I will straighten out the problems that you have. No, it wasn't Darla. <laughs> I said, well, if you'll come in here and serve for a couple of years and give in to the kingdom, then we'll talk about what you can do. That was the last Sunday I saw her. <laughs> I've been taken to lunch and dinner before and told how many things I was doing wrong. And I know it's kind of hard to believe, but I have been brought to tears by people who have been so mean in church, telling me the things that I did wrong. Please do not do that to Kate. Please do not do that to him. Because if God calls you to a church and there are things that need to be changed in church, then he will give you the things to say. Right? I'm talking about calling here. What's the call that you have? Because we see Jonah, he was called, and he didn't want to do it, guys. Man, he, he, man, it was just too hard. 
Well, let's talk about relationship here for a second. What if God gives you, shows you the perfect person to marry? How many of you have had that? Three of us. (laughs) My boys better be lifting their hands. Okay. (laughs) What are some of the things you're going to see in a spouse? Those of you who are... Those of you who are married right now and we're talking to those who are not married, what are some of the things you're going to see in a spouse that you know you've got to have, sir? I don't know, the ability to, you know, work things out. The ability to help each other? Okay. You won't see much of anything till you live with them. Amen. Why is it that a person will change six months after you've lived with them? Do I need to come right back here? <laughs> Have you seen any change in Dylan since you've married him? He's just better looking. Yeah. <laughs> Should I ask her then? Sure, Have you seen any change in Dale? Oh, yes. <laughs> is it good? Some is. <laughs> She said, some is. If you're going to marry somebody and they're not in church before you marry them, you are not going to change them. And you are not going to send them. They're not going to come to church because of you. They may come to church two or three times and that's about it. If you're coming upon anybody and you think that that's just the right person because he or she is so good looking, but they aren't Christian, I got one thing for you. Run! Run! Run as fast as you can! Relationships. <laughs> God's invite, God wants you to go to a particular church and you're going there because you want to change things. You need to go to a different church. Because that's not the church God's calling you to. God's calling you to serve. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Come on. Everybody agree with Pastor Paul Paul wants. This Sunday morning. You see, because we can either take what God has for us or we can throw it away. We can live for God our entire life and sometimes we never see any abundance that God has given us because we are just too disagreeable. Did you know that a born-again believer can be unhappy and depressed all their life? Simply because we're running. And God gave me this short message this morning because I want to ask you, are you running? Are you running truly from what God has for you? Because really, most of us know if we're running or not. Yeah, we do. Especially if we're born again, got the Spirit of God in us. Because sometimes when God calls you to a certain thing, it's going to be a little more difficult. The devil's going to try to stop you. All hell's going to break loose on your life. Just because God calls you to something doesn't mean that everything is going to go easy for you. It's actually the exact opposite. What are you doing with the calling on your life? Because the greatest thing you'll ever do is answer God's call. Amen? I mean, that's the greatest thing that we will ever do. Don't be like Jonah and get into the belly of a fish and have to pray your way out. Amen? Amen. Stand up with me. Amen. I just want you to bow your head. Go ahead and close your eyes. We don't have to look around any. You know, we're just going to agree with everybody this morning. There are some in here that, that they've been wanting to answer the call on their life for years and have not answered it. Because it seems so scary and so out of place and they're going to have to change their life and they're going to have to, they're just going to have to do things different and they've never answered the call. They've never answered the voice of God. 
And Father, right now, we just lift them up. If that's you, I just want you to, you don't have to lift your hand or anything. I just want you to, to absorb this this morning. Just absorb it into you right now. Father, I pray that they just see that calling and they see it clearly. And that they answer that upon their life right now. Father, if it's in this church, if it's outside this church, if it's in missions, if it's in giving, Father, you're probably talking to somebody right now that, that they, they want to be a big giver into the kingdom of God, but they just can't see it. And Father, right now, that you're going to show them how to do it. Father, there's somebody in here that's that's want to be in missions, and you're going to show them how to do it. Father, there's someone in here that's being, that's being called to be in the church in administration or in leadership that you're showing them what you're leading them to. Father, we do not have time to be in darkness. We just simply do not have time. So Father, I thank you right now that each and every person in this room knows what you've called them to, knows what you've called them to do, And they're going to believe in that right now, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. And all the people said, Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a big shout this morning. Here comes Cade, and here comes Michelle. Come on up here. I'll give you the mic. Oh, thank you. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Michelle. I'm the kids' department leader, and... I just love how God works. Oh, my goodness. We're doing Jonah and the whale in the nursery. The kids are doing like a perfect storm kind of lesson about how God gives us hope. And I'm actually starting a small group this Wednesday night at 730. It's a Zoom. And don't limit God. And that's all it's over. Andrew Womack does it. So if you don't join the small group, please go listen to that because it talks a lot about how we limit him. And so, I mean... You didn't even know any of that. So it was just, it's just perfect. I mean, God is preparing us. We're comfortable, a lot of us, me. Um, and so we're not pushing ourselves to do more. If we can do it in our own strength, then we're not doing what the fullest of what he has for us. So rely on him. That's good. You know what I got out of that message, Dad, is that whenever you run from the call of God on your life, you cause a storm in other people's lives. You think it only affects you, but it's affecting everybody around you. And I'll start with a little bit of honesty. This is one of the few Sundays a year that I didn't want to be here. Um, and like there were days leading up to it that I'm just like, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to not going to church on Sunday. And then I had every excuse not to come this morning and God's stirring and stirring and stirring. I was like, nope, need to be here and help Beth with the kids. And he's prodding and he's poking. And I'm like, I'll be obedient. I'm going to go because he's been stirring this word in me all week, but it was my week off. Yeah, he was still stirring the word in me. And it's actually been a very interesting week because I've had a lot of uh, margin in my time this week because when I don't prepare a message, it frees up about eight to 10 hours in my week. And when you have four small kids, that is a lot of time that you're just like, wow, all this time, <laughs> wow. And um, one of the things so he asked me to start a business months ago. Print, all I got was printing business and that Mason is supposed to help me with it. And I told Mason that at church one Sunday and surprised him by that. But I haven't gotten any more details since then. And then it was Wednesday, I was sitting down and he downloads the details of how that's supposed to go. And that same day, I also know that I'm supposed to write books, but I don't know what book to start with. So I've just been waiting for him to show me, because I don't want to go off in my own idea, because that's frustrating <laughs> and wastes a lot of time. Same day, he gave me the book that I'm supposed to write, the title of it, and what the cover is going to look like. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to surprise you later. So over the next nine weeks that I will not be delivering the message here at No Limits, I'm going to be writing that book. And I believe it'll be done by the time that I get up here again to bring the word. So I'm excited about that, but I wanted to tell you guys that to encourage you that maybe God's given you a very broad idea of what you're called to do. 
but you don't know the details yet. He's going to bring them to you. It's going to drop on you one day, and that's when you get started. Until then, the whole waiting on God, you wait expectingly, and you wait for those details because they're coming. Now, that's just a bonus message that he gave me for you today. And now, the more challenging one to give, the one that I was running from, the one that I was acting a little bit like Jonah and saying, no, God, I don't want to bring that word today. We just go ahead and bow your heads before we close your eyes. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. You're already here, and we just want you to do your thing today. Lord, let your word go forth with great power, with boldness, and let it accomplish exactly what you want it to accomplish today. I asked you to give it to somebody else, and you wouldn't. I asked you to wait until next week, (laughs) and you wouldn't. So apparently this is for today, right here, right now. And it all started, I believe, it was this past Tuesday or Wednesday, Beth and I were out on a date and she was preparing for Candace's wedding. She still didn't have shoes because I guess she was living on the wild side. And so we had to hit every store in Owasso (laughs) to look for the perfect shoes. We went to eight stores and they weren't until, we didn't find them until the last store. And every store we were walking into, you see the rainbow section. And I was baffled at the outward display of this movement that's going on. But just a lot of the rainbow. I see a lot of the rainbow, a lot of the rainbow. And then last night I'm out for a walk and I'm just thinking, I'm like, wow, God, you gave us the rainbow as a promise to not destroy us again with the flood. What a beautiful promise. And I was thinking about how most of the world sees the rainbow today and how it has nothing to do with that. But then I was thinking, I was like, you know what, God? They're so close. Like the rainbow is the reason that we're still here. Because here we find ourselves in about the same place that the world was back when God destroyed it with the flood. We're promoting the same things. We're doing the same things. We're killing babies. I mean, we're doing all this stuff that is worthy of a, of a world destroy, destroyed, right? We've earned ourselves a flood. And so the LGBTQ movement chooses the rainbow as their symbol. It's like, wow, they're so close because the rainbow is why they're here. The rainbow is the mercy of God. The rainbow is their, their chance to make Jesus the Lord of their life. And, and repent and turn towards him. But then they kind of got it a little skewed because the rainbow represents pride to the world, right? It's the, the pride movement. So we're caught up in our pride and pride comes before a fall. And man, it's just all it takes is like this little shift in the mindset for them to see the rainbow in the right way and to call upon the name of the Lord because they realize his mercy and his grace and that he still loves them and that he's still for them. The rainbow, God's promise to not destroy the earth, but there's more than the earth, right? There's still our eternity. And eternity is is our choice. We choose to call upon the name of the Lord or we choose to make ourselves our Lord and live our own way and do our own thing. And I'm so concerned with America and that we've talked so much about salvation, but we left repentance out of the discussion. And people are being misled. And I don't want people to feel bad about their sin. I just want them to know that the power of God saves them, redeems them. 
And it's not that once you're saved, you go on and you, you never sin again, but he, he puts inside of you the power to walk away from that stuff. And sometimes it takes years and sometimes it happens immediately. But the thing is, you live this life of repentance. You, you go off, you do the same thing. You say, no, God, I'm turning back towards you. Thank you for your forgiveness. And that's the beauty of following Jesus. I'm, I'm just so aware of eternity. And I don't know if it's because Jesus is going to come back in the next few months or whatever. He doesn't give us a time. We can't know the time. It's going to be unexpected. People are going to be marrying and playing and living life and he's going to come back. That's what the word says. But we should really live like he's coming back tomorrow and we should love people like he's coming back tomorrow and we should share the truth like he's coming back tomorrow. And the thing we have to learn is that you can share the truth and love people at the same time. You can love and respect the LGBT community and lead them into truth at the same time. And it's a challenge. But with the Holy Spirit, you're enabled to do exactly what needs to be done. And some people are going to play different parts along that process. Some people are just the love of God going into the room and letting them know that God loves them. And the next person comes in and shares the truth with, truth with them in a way that they can understand. And we all work together. It's the body of Christ working together. But what I believe God wanted me to come share this today is because he said, Cade, if you don't share the truth, they're not going to hear it. You have so many opportunities to hear the lies, but you have few opportunities to hear the truth. And that's why I'm here this morning to tell you the truth that God made men to be men, women to be women, and marriage to be between one man and one woman, and there is nothing outside of that. That's the truth, and that's the, the life that he wants you to live, and that's where the promises are, and that's where the freedom is, and that's where the power is, and that's where God's presence is, is when we step into obedience, and we should make every effort as the body of Christ to lead people into that place, not because we feel like we're better than them or because we feel like we've earned the right to tell people when they're sinning, but because we want them to be free. We want them to live in God's best for their life. We don't want them to be hardened by sin's deceitfulness and then somehow pulled away from Christ because all sin leads to destruction. You can't earn your way to salvation. It's a free gift through Jesus Christ. But the word says, repent of your sins and then call upon the name of the Lord. And, and then I'm also remembered of Jesus in the story of the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. He never called her an adulteress. He never got on to her for her sin. Nothing like that. He had a, a discussion with the people around her and they said, hey, woman, where are your accusers? And she said, I don't have any. He said, I don't accuse you either. But then he said, go and sin no more. So that's the message of salvation. He saves you and then he says, go and sin no more. Because sin is destructive. Sin's gonna hurt you. And so God, I pray for our nation right now. And I ask that the truth be made known in a way, in the most loving way possible. And you know, I say this from a place of compassion because there was a time that I was a part of that community. I was a part of the LGBTQ community and I was looking for people to celebrate me and my choices and, and then I'd get home and as soon as I was by myself, I would just feel the weight of my choices. And, and I never told anybody about that part. On the outward, I was just like, yeah, this is great. And I'd get home by myself and I'd be crying and I'd be so disturbed and so troubled on the inside because I knew it's not who I was. So I just pray a fresh identity over our entire nation right now, God. I ask that you give them your identity. Show them who they are in Christ. Flood them with their godly, God-given identity. Let them see who they are, who they really are. And I break this curse that's over our nation. And I stand for our nation.
because God, you gave Jesus the nations and you told us to go disciple the nations. So here we are in America, this is our nation. And Lord, we ask you to bless it, even though it doesn't deserve it. We love you, Lord. And I want to say this to anybody who's watching online. If this is something you struggle with and there's something stirred on the inside of you, you're like, I know people are telling me it's okay, but I actually want freedom from this. I want to tell you that there is freedom. If God helped me walk away from it, he can help you walk away from it. I've now been married for almost 14 years. God gave me four beautiful kids and he's blessed me beyond my wildest imagination, even though I didn't deserve it. It's because I turned to him and I said, Jesus, I need freedom. I want freedom. And that's all you got to do. You just turn to him and he will give you freedom. Amen. 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 Ooh, the Lord's good. All the time. All the time. If you stepped into that freedom that I was just talking about, I'd really love for you to just reach out and let me know because there's so much power in testimony. And so there's an easy way that you can tell us. You just need to text us. Our number is 918-373-9883. I don't know if they can put that on the screen for you online or not, the phone number. Uh, I'll say it again, though, 918-373-9883. Just, just text us and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Now, many of you guys know that um, one of the ministries that we support outside of this church is in Mexico. The missionary there is Ben. We send $1,000 every month to Mexico to support what's going on there. Um, He sent me an email the other day, and he used to send really long-winded emails, so much that I would get intimidated by them when I opened them, because there's no spacing, there's no paragraphs, it's just like this big block of text about this long. I'm like, oh, wow, now I get to decipher this. But he's gotten better. He's actually like splitting it up into sections now. (laughs) I want to share with you something he said. He said, today, as we arrived back in Jerez, it started raining, meaning this year can potentially be a great year of harvest for our farmers in the area. Normally, the rains don't start until late June in our area, but amen, this means that it should be a great year of harvest, both physically and spiritually. So just wanted to share that with you. Things are going really well in Mexico, so it's, it's just really awesome to know what's going on elsewhere. And if you're ready to give today, your giving is what enables that to happen. Just raise your hand. One of our ushers will bring you an offering envelope if you're giving by cash or check, or you give online anytime, and how you do that is you visit nolimits.fyi in your address bar, and then tap the giving button, and it'll get you where you need to go.